How's it going, healthy people of YouTube? Welcome to a new video. How important are the kidneys? I've mentioned it in other videos, the kidneys are essential organs. You can live with one kidney, but you can't live with zero kidneys. We already said that their main function is filtration. They filter the blood, remove what we don't need, collect what we do need, and do us a great favor by performing this great function of eliminating toxins along with the liver. They are the two major organs that eliminate toxins. The liver and kidneys have essential endocrine functions, such as activating the very important vitamin D or secreting erythropoietin, erythropoietin, which helps to form red blood cells to form blood. They also have functions of maintaining the internal environment, controlling blood pressure, controlling electrolytes, controlling ions in the blood, super important and control of blood volume, really plasma volume that is circulating through our body. Basically the kidneys, as I say, are essential. And today we talk about what happens, what are the symptoms that can occur if your kidneys are not working well. If there is a kidney failure, that can be acute or it can be chronic. So we are going to discuss what those symptoms are. We are going to look at up to 14 symptoms that the kidneys may not be functioning properly. The first is what we call a cutback in diuresis. What's the meaning? Peeing less. If you see that the amount of urine you emit has drastically decreased in a short period of time without changes in intake, well, this could be a problem. If you see that you're not peeing at all, if urination has completely stopped and you haven't urinated for a while, well, it could be even more serious. This is called a cutback in diuresis, as I say and it could be a symptom that things are not looking good for your kidney. The second point is the famous edemas with a D, okay? Not enemas with an N. Edemas, edemas especially of the lower limbs, of feet, of ankles, of the legs. They are an inflammation and accumulation of fluid, of fluid in the subcutaneous cellular tissue that causes them to increase in volume, increase the perimeter of the ankles, of the legs, of the feet. The feet are swollen, it's a swelling. There can also be symptoms that the kidneys are not working well, just as it can be a symptom that the heart is not working well. Edemas appear in many pathologies, not only in kidney problems. The third point, dyspnea. What do we doctors mean when we talk about dyspnea? Difficulty breathing, I'm short of breath. When the kidney fails, there is a buildup of fluid in the body. Imagine the kidneys as the tap that opens and allows fluid to come out because we can't put fluid in, drink and not let fluid out because we would turn into a swollen bubble. Essentially, when the kidney doesn't filter properly, it doesn't function well. The tap is closed, we keep drinking, we keep eating, we keep ingesting fluids and the water balance is positive. And what happens with this? Well, with a very positive water balance at the cardiopulmonary level, dyspnea occurs, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing. The fourth point is fatigue or in medical terms, asthenia. It's a very non-specific symptom, but it can also occur in kidney failure and kidney problems. The fifth point, confusion, is also non-specific. Many patients, especially older patients, when they do not have good functioning, good kidney function, well, they also have cognitive symptoms, they are more confused, they can concentrate worse, they can think quite worse. The sixth point is nausea. There are some substances that must be eliminated by the kidney. When these substances accumulate in the body because they cannot be eliminated by the kidney, nausea, the urge to vomit or vomiting can occur. The eighth point is very important, arrhythmias. We said at the beginning that the kidney controls the amount of ions in the blood, especially sodium and potassium. What happens when these ions are either too high or too low? Well, the heart doesn't tolerate that very well and serious cardiac arrhythmias can occur, especially due to rises and falls in potassium. Ninth, very important and very striking point. If you want, I can make a video just about this point. Increased foam in the urine is normal. It's normal that when we urinate, there's a little bit of foam. A finger's worth of foam is normal, and this depends on many factors. If you urinate from further away with more force, with less force, but if the amount of foam is increasing over the days, it does not decrease and it goes up, it goes up, it goes up. There is more and more foam in the urine. It can be indicative of one thing, of protein loss in the urine. And when there is a significant loss of proteins in the urine, 
it means that something is wrong at the kidney level because proteins, as you can imagine, are important. They make up the muscles. They are important in the immune system. The visceral proteins, they are very important. They are very important. Therefore, everything that is important, the kidney does not want to lose. It does not lose it. If it loses it, it means that the kidney is failing in its function. It is losing important things through the urine. These are the proteins. Okay? And it can cause an increase in foam in the urine. The tenth point, hematuria. What does it mean? Well, presence of blood in the urine. Urine normally should not have blood. So if you see blood in the urine, there might be a problem either in the kidney or what comes after the kidney, the ureter or the bladder or even the prostate. Point number 11, itching. What is itching? It's the itch, okay? The itch, the sting. There are also toxic substances that need to be eliminated through urine. When they accumulate, just like they cause nausea and vomiting before, they can cause itching. Although I also tell you it's difficult. That is, kidney disease has to be very advanced, very, very advanced to produce these symptoms, especially itching, okay? They can also produce a metallic taste in the mouth or even an ammonia smell, an ammonia smell in the breath. This is for the same reason, because these toxic substances have not been eliminated through urine and are accumulating in the blood, producing these symptoms that are fortunately becoming rarer to see. Okay, because kidney diseases are diagnosed earlier. And the last point I'm going to mention, point number 14, is high blood pressure. Your blood pressure figures may skyrocket for what we've discussed. The kidney handles the balance of fluid volume within the body, so if it doesn't fulfill that function, the pressure can skyrocket okay. And what causes kidney disease, kidney failure? How do we doctors divide it? Well, there are many and we have a quite useful, quite practical classification. Basically, we classify the causes of kidney deterioration into three. Those causes that affect what goes before the kidney basically affect the amount of blood that reaches the kidney. In the end, the kidney is an organ that filters the blood, but for it to filter the blood, that blood has to reach it. Well, there are causes that do not provide enough volume, that do not provide enough blood. And if a filter does not receive enough liquid to filter, well, there is nothing to filter and the kidney deteriorates, okay? These causes are called pre-renal and here we find causes such as diarrhea, bleeding, fever or dehydration in general. That is causes of volume loss, of fluid loss. The second causes are called renal. They are called renal precisely because they affect the kidney. It no longer affects what is before the kidney but affects the kidney. And here we can find a multitude from diseases that affect the so-called glomeruli, which are like microscopic balls of blood vessels where this glomerular filtration is performed. That's why it's called glomerular, because it's performed in the glomeruli, okay? And sometimes there is what is known as glomerulonephritis, that is an inflammation of these glomeruli. There is autoimmune pathology like lupus, okay, which causes kidney damage or drugs that directly cause kidney damage. Also, a very common pathology in athletes, which is rhabdomyolysis. We produced an intriguing video on rhabdomyolysis. Postrenal causes, that is, those that occur after the kidney, those that occur because something goes wrong after the kidney. And what happens after the kidney? Before the kidney were the blood vessels that reached the kidney. In the kidney was the kidney. And after the kidney are the collecting urinary tracts, ureters, bladder, urethra, which allow the excretion of urine. So when there is a problem at the level of these urinary tracts, at the post-renal level, the kidney can also deteriorate. In fact, it often does when there are problems such as bladder or prostate neoplasms, or more frequently, fortunately, kidney stones, stones in the kidney that detach from the kidney and end up in the ureter, the duct that connects the kidney to the bladder and, for example, obstruct it, okay? Because that little stone stays there obstructed. So guys, pre-renal causes, renal causes, post-renal causes, up to 14 symptoms that your kidneys may not be working well. 
kidneys, two essential organs that perform essential functions that you have to take care of throughout your entire life. We already gave the keys on how to take care of your kidney health, about what you had to avoid, about how important it was to control factors such as obesity, tobacco, anti-inflammatory drugs, and many other factors. I will leave the videos here. Now, yes, thank you very much for watching the video. If you liked it, share it. See you in the next one. A big hug and keep empowered.